traders from across the globe, welcome back. Summer is over, Labor Day is over, September has begun, the kids are going back to school, and traders are coming back to work, and welcome back. Traders, I am showing you a video, video number 1667 in my long series of nightly videos, or almost nightly videos. In these videos, I hope to teach you the art of technical analysis because I'm pretty darn good at it and I don't mind sharing my talents with this crowd. Omniax, we got some good stuff in this video. Tonight's video, the 1667th, is coming at you on a Monday night, Labor Day, for trading Tuesday, 9.05.17. It's already September. Traders, remember, futures trading is always going to be risky. It is risky today. It'll be risky tomorrow. It is risky every day of your lives. Do not trade this market without stops. Always, always put your stops in. Don't worry about risk. Put stops in. It's like driving a... Well, just put your stops in, okay? There's no sense in ever, ever putting on a huge hundred plus thousand dollar commodities position without a stop in. So be realistic. Put your stops in. Let's move forward. Ah, what do we have in this video? Being that I mentioned it's already September and September 5th, OmniCamp is October 20th. You guys have limited weeks. There are two open seats. If you want to come out and learn analysis and how to come up with the Omni, and Omni is Oscar's market navigational indicator. If you would like to come up to, if you'd like to come out to Las Vegas and learn the Omni with me, from me, how to do this for yourselves without needing me, you come on down to livewithoscar.com, fill out an OmniCamp application, and I will call you for the only OmniCamp this year, the weekend of September, excuse me, October 20th. All right, traders, wow, I'm a little rusty here, huh? It's a couple of mistakes already. But hey, I just had a couple of days off. Let's move forward. Green Omni in the ice, not the one in Chicago yet. The, the volume there is kind of small. I like using the ice, New York City, the Russell 2000. Green Omni, we like buying dips in the Russell 2000. Come to livewithoscar.com. I'll show you how we're going to do that. What else is on the board? Tonight, you and I are going to take a little journey. Let's take a bird's eye view of the current market situation, technically. Forget about the trees where we navigate every day and we buy and sell and today we're bullish and tomorrow we're bearish and then we're bullish, bullish and bearish. That's the trees. Let's go look at the forest like we're up in a helicopter or we're, we're a bird and we're flying over this forest, which is the market itself. Let's take a look at that. Summer is now over. Let's get serious again, traders. Do not fall in love with any downside that you see. I'll tell you that right now. You've been hearing that from me all year, but don't fall in love with the downside. We've had some down segments. Downside's not coming yet. I'll show you some proof. You know me. If I see it coming, I'll start hemming and hawing and rattling in video after video. I don't see that happening, and I will show you the picture that you can see for yourselves on the long-term charts when we take a little stroll down bird's eye. We'll take a little bird's eye view down the uh, forest there and take a look at these. So, September, not October. Very interesting. There is a lot of people, there are a lot of mindset out there that thinks that October, the crash of October, is the worst month of the year. And because of 1987, and I was there for it on the trading floors, we had an October crash. And then in 2007, it started to show us in 2007, another crash was coming in October. It started to give signals. It's got two major years where, in October 2008 as well, it's got two major years where it looks like there were huge moves, and they were huge moves, but those are two years out of many. But it has the bad reputation. I am here to tell you I've been watching very closely since I'm 18 years old. That's a zillion years ago, every day of my life. September is the rock and roll month, not October. I call it Rocktober. I joke around with it. The most treacherous month is September, not October, reputation-wise, and it's a good reason. October's got the reputation, but September is absolutely the most treacherous. So, what I'm about to show you, because it's a bird's-eye view, it's a slightly longer-term view, I don't care what happens over the next two to three weeks. This is about where we're going moving forward. That's this part of the chart segment. Remember, 
September, not October, is the rock and roll month. Rocktober is a great name. September is where you get that crazy volatility year after year, as opposed to October, where every couple of years it happens. Dollar, is it nearing support? I think it is, while gold is possibly, possibly nearing resistance, and that would make sense. Let me show you the chart segment. Let me not waste any more of your time, because I want to get back downstairs and go to work. With no further ado, let's go look at some charts. Traders, you are looking at a daily chart of the NASDAQ. Nice bull flag, nice breakout of that flag. We looked at this all last week. Omni was giving us buy signals. The shame of what happened last week is we missed getting long here and we missed getting long there. We had orders in, we just missed getting filled, us Omniacs, and the market took off. And the shame of it is the orders that we did get filled in were in markets that didn't do well. My, my, my performance last week was absolutely horrible. Just wanted to, forgot to mention, I forgot to mention that in the first part of the video. I apologize. I had two winning days, two losing days. I dragged your Omniacs through it. These fills never happened and the crappy fills were filled. Sorry about that, kids, but let's move forward, all right? So here we are. Here is the bull flag I was trying to catch with you guys last week. We'll catch some of it this week, I assure you. Here's on your daily. Nice breakout. That's one way to look at this. Then we've got the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 makes its way back above the Omni, rallies up, comes down, tests it, takes off and settles at the highs on Friday. Now, looking at this, the Russell maybe doesn't look all that good to you, right? Because, yes, it's going up, but... Look at all these slams up and down, and then it's up here, and it runs down, and this could be a shoulder, and that could be a head, and this could be a shoulder, and that could be a head and shoulders. Could be, right? But you have to look at things now a little more realistically. Summer is over. All the kidding around is done. Let's go take a bird's eye view of the Russell. You see from here to here all this movement, this entire segment? You know where that was? That was this portion of the flag on a weekly. Just this portion of the flag. This is the summer, right here. You're looking at the summer this year. So all of that craziness that you've seen in the Russell on the daily happened in the context of a perfect Oscarism F bull flag. An F flag, a bullish F flag, bouncing off the bottom, bouncing off the top. That's all that happened this summer. That's it. So when you look at that crazy daily chart, oh my goodness, what's going on? And you look at this and go, well, wait a minute, summer's over. You just bounced off the law of a flag. That looks great, right? That sort of smooths everything out. So there you go. Here's our EMA, if you will. This chart is our <laughs> exponential moving average, right? It smoothed everything out for us. And you look at the NASDAQ on a weekly. Could anyone come up with any technical reasoning why you think that this is not extremely bullish moving forward into the future? That is about as bullish of a look as you'd ever want to get. What's nice about breaking out of this long-term blue channel into this shorter term, but still on a weekly, long term of course, but shorter term green channel, is that you seem to hit it, and then you make this sort of a pullback, it takes a little while, you get here, you run up there, you just about hit it, you make some sort of a pullback, you get here, it's running up right now, it, the pattern is perfect. So you, you got to like that, right? When you take this bird's eye look, when you look at the forest and not the trees, that forest looks pretty darn good to me. Do not fall in love with the downside yet. If we start breaching trend lines and it starts to look crazy, we'll talk about it. That, no matter how many people contact you on the internet, contact you through email or on the telephone to tell you that the top is in, don't listen to the lunatics. Look at the charts. Let's move forward. Dow Jones Industrial Average on a weekly bar. This chart you have probably seen in 8 to 10 videos. Sometimes I bring it out when I think a point needs to be made. And the point that I usually make is this. It, it usually builds a bull flag. This one didn't work, right? That one, you put a no there. Oh my goodness, bull flag didn't work. But suddenly, down it goes, up. Nice rally, bull flag. Nice rally, bull flag. Nice rally, bull flag. Nice rally, bull flag. Nice rally, and this looks like a little bull flag. It's exactly what it has been doing month after month, and now it's just about breaking out of this long-term trendline channel. That's fantastic, if you ask me. So looking at the bird's-eye view, the forest over the trees on weekly charts, they look fantastic. We're not going down anytime soon. Transportation average on the weekly. Now look at this. 
Transportation average, if you look at it on a daily, is as scary as the day is long, and I am with you on that thought. But then you pull out the weekly and you say, well, when you were under the 50 ball moving average, you could not get above it for anything. But once you got above it, you held, exploded, held, rallied, held, breaking out of a flag. What comes next? A bigger rally. That's what should happen. Because you broke out of the flag, hey, you came back to test it, and on a weekly, I could see it doing this and still calling that a hold of a flag. So it came back into the flag started to test it, now it's breaking back out again after bouncing off the 50, and every time it does that, you get a decent rally or a drop out of it, right? The 50's been good on this chart. So, looking at this bird's eye view, it looks fantastic right now, as scary as it looks on the daily. This is long-term view, so I don't care what happens during the month of September, that's not what this is about. This is about where we are heading to by the month of December. Gold now, let's take a look at this. Gold, long term, weekly now, had a nice run. And on a weekly chart, this is a fantastic run. Look at the change in money. 1050 price, almost 14 price, a lot of movement, right? So we've had a nice rally. But this seems to be good old territory where it tends to run into trouble. So we're not in trouble yet. Gold could go another 30, 40 dollars before it hits this spot, right? It could get to 1370 and still be inside of this area right here. Same area. So we've got an area that you must recognize when gold gets up there. It seems to have trouble long-term viewing this. Now, watch this. Long-term viewing the dollar index, almost the exact opposite because when dollars go down, gold goes up, right? So when the dollar has been going down for the last few months and gold has been going up and the dollar going lower, but look, back at a spot just like gold where there's a lot of support. And what's, what I like about this the most, the 200 ball moving average is right there. And we are above it at this moment in time. And we have bounced off the same spot that we continue to bounce from, but this time with the fund managers, green light special, staring everybody in the face. So if gold is having trouble right about here and here and here and rallying, and dollar is now starting to run into support right here. If dollar rallies, the gold will drop. That's the way this works. So this is an interesting area, and that's why I wanted to show it to you. Remember, this is a weekly view. It's not about what will happen tomorrow or even five days from now. It's about what does this look like in 10, 15 days, 20 days. Does this still look the same? Did it hold? Did gold break? We'll revisit the weekly charts in a couple of weeks when there's a few more bars to look at. That is my presentation to you traders. Do not fall in love with the downside just yet. Join me at livewithoscar.com. Traders, there it is. You've seen the charts. These are long-term, bird's eye view. It is the forest, not the trees. So if you nuts call me tomorrow and email me and say, Oscar, it didn't do what you said, you're not paying attention. This is a longer term view where we will be in a few weeks. We'll revisit these charts and see. Short term trading, I could be bullish, bearish, bearish, bullish. You don't know what you're going to get until we run the Omni every day. Whatever Omni says daily is what we do, but I'll tell you right now, do not listen to these top callers. Okay, let's just think back for a moment. 1987, we had a crash, right? Let's just do simple math. This is Wait until you see. Wait, wait, the algebra I'm going to use here. You're going to go crazy. <laughs> so, in 19... Oh, wait, wait, we need a little thicker marker here. 1987, we had a crash. And the market had a few moves up and down and blah, blah, blah. And it didn't do anything again on that nature, size, scale. Till we went from 1987, right? Here's where the math comes in. Watch this. Now we're going to go, when was the next move? To O. Oh, seven. Now, how many of you can get the brain power to figure out the difference in time between 1987 and 2007? I know it's not going to be easy. Everyone get your calculators out. If you've got to go to Google, get yourself a tutor. See if you can figure out how many years in between crashes. My crazy brain tells me about 20. Now, if you want to go further with the math, how many years has it been since 2007? Watch the way this works. So let's erase this really difficult problem, <laughs> and let's go to another one. It's going to be really difficult. Now, here's what you have to think. 
2007, or look, we could call it 2008, was when the crash took place. What's the year right now? Do you know? Do you know? What's the year? What year are we in? 2017. Oh, 2017, 2017. So let's just take this away for the people who haven't gone to school past the first grade. If the crash took place in 2007, and it's only 2017, how many years do you have in between? Once again, go to your calculators, fingers, toes, whatever it takes. Tell me how many years you have in between. My crazy brain says somewhere between 9 and 10. So, if crashes happen, basically every 20 years, how many years do you think we have now in between crashes? You see what I mean? I, I, I'm being facetious, of course, I'm having fun with this, but you can't just say the top is in. And I've got people that have called the top literally now. Almost every time I put out a video, they call the top for three to four years now. When is this going to stop? I mean, the day you get bullish, I'm coming out with my first top video. I don't care if I even do the analysis. So the day you cats that keep calling the top get bullish and say we're going higher, I'm not even going to look at charts. I'm going to come out and call the top of the video. Thank you to you guys because you can't possibly continue to call the top over and over again and expect credibility from it, right? You never see me calling the top, ever. I said, well, it looks like we might have a little bit of a down segment. I don't see the top coming in. You haven't heard those words come from me since 2009. So when I think the top is coming in, like I told you in 2007, I'll let you know. Until then, don't listen to these lunatics. I, I kid you not, they, most people don't know how to read a chart. That segment I just showed you, that's pretty, that's as basic as the day is long. That's about as layman terms as I can show you in these videos. I do much, much more intricate analysis to figure out where markets are going, as you might imagine. You know, so come to me if you want to know where things should likely go technically. That's at livewithoscar.com in my free live trading room. Enough of that sermon. With the, after me saying all of that, I was horrible last week, like I said. So doesn't mean I'm going to be good at the information that I give you, because last week I gave out great information and used it. Terribly, poorly, horribly. But that was last week. Head down, nose to the grindstone, on to the next trade. Let's see what happens. Traders, I'll see you all at live with Oscar.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. Love you guys, you Omniacs. Some of you have been here for the 11 straight years I've been doing this. Well, I've been doing this since I'm a kid, but the 11 straight years I've put the Omni out in the public eye for you, and I thank you so much for sticking around. What I will do for you next is we're revamping the site. We're going to revamp it so that it's here for the future. We're going to redo a new mobile app. And then I'm going to open up something called the Omni Trading Academy, where I'm going to start holding courses where you can purchase a course and I can teach you parts of what you need to know until you reach a spot where you can do this on your own. All of that is coming. My programmers are working on it feverishly. All of this is meant to help all of us get a little better at this game, move a little higher up the ladder, and see if we can prevent ourselves from losing our accounts. Let's see where we go. LiveWithOscar.com. Remember, keep your emotions out of trading. One of the best things you can do to help keep those emotions at bay is Take one of these damn seats in Omnicamp. It's the best thing you'll ever do. If you don't do that, say this to yourselves every morning, afternoon, every evening, and you know what that is. Stop so Futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. We do not claim or guarantee that you will profit from the information provided.